Megan, great to have you with us here in the Beat Patch. Uh, as everyone knows, of course, uh, in COVID times in 2020 and still here in 21, uh, so much of uh, e-commerce uh, utilization has increased globally from consumers. Uh, and e-commerce along with CTV and other uh, areas of our digital life are certainly having a moment that we think will will last for quite a while. Uh, given Criteo or Criteos, uh, depending on what side of the pond you're on, uh, legacy uh, with your huge uh, client base and uh, ways that you've been helping with uh, with media buying and other forms of sale uh, driving for your retail clients. Tell us about uh, any changes that have occurred uh, given the increase uh, in e-commerce other than probably uh, a lot more visitors to be tracking. Yeah, look, it's been a fascinating time. It's probably not um, unexpected as to some of the things that we've seen. I'll give you a couple of things. One is that um, uh, is that consumers are doing a lot more e-commerce shopping, as you know, that's obvious, and especially when there's been lockdowns, uh, there's no other way to get um, goods and services but online. The interesting thing that that brings, though, is that as logistics are starting to play a part in consumers' choice, i.e., they'll buy what they can get access to. And we've seen a lot of issues around logistics and, uh, and delivery. And so that means that consumers are starting to shop elsewhere, uh, away from large brands in many cases and into local brands and smaller brands. Uh, the ongoing effect of that uh, is also interesting. 81% of consumers say that their loyalty may have shifted to new brands, which means that big brands, uh, when this hopefully goes away, are gonna to have to do a lot of work around moving loyalty back um, to, uh, to the bigger brands. We're seeing um, trends in terms of uh, shopper day, for instance, the, uh, the big spends that usually happen on one particular day at the end of the year. We see those spreading out uh, as opposed to all happening on one day. Um, because uh, there's more discounting that happens throughout the course of the year. Uh, and of course, um, the logistics, once again, means that if they're shopping for a particular reason at that point, it was around Christmas period, they want to get into it early because they know that uh, it may not be delivered on time. So all of these sort of knock on effects from logistics, from availability of products to change in brand tastes, uh, and also um, the type of things that folks buy because they're shopping from home, they've got new activities, new interests, uh, are sort of lending themselves to purchasing homeware as opposed to airline tickets. All of those things that are kind of obvious, but they are actually coming alive. And the last thing I'll say, which is really important, is that the trade spends from marketers are starting to shift towards digital faster than what they ever have before because there's no point in having uh, promotional packages in store or brochures and pamphlets coming through the letterbox. It's all about trying to get a uh, share, uh, share of eyeballs from those consumers who are online. So it's interesting times. So you highlighted so many new or expanded touch points and, and data points that uh, uh, Critio has uh, with all of your uh, retail partners. Um, we also in our own industry have some dynamic uh, uh, changes going on around identity uh, as we gradually shift to a post cookie world. Knowing that Critio invested in its own shopper graph years ago uh, to build its own assets and unique value for your retail partners, how do you weigh that and, and, and think about that in a, in a post cookie world? And, and we know that uh, Critio has, has proposed its own identity solutions for the whole industry. And you've also announced recently a, a partnership with the Trade Desk with their unique ID. How do you how do you uh, put the pieces together in terms of mapping uh, Critio's own identity graph and then expanding that in uh, for first and second party data opportunities for your retail partners? Yeah, gosh, so much going there. And the point here is, of course, is to leapfrog uh, the third party world. That is yesterday's technology. And to your point, the assets that we have in place certainly enable us to do that. So the shopper graph that you talked about is now uh, two and a half billion consumers strong. So the it's first party data sitting inside that shopper graph. It is data that goes down to the SKU level of their purchasing. So this is true shopper data, which is probably the most powerful, important data um, to anybody who's buying advertising online. Add to that or consider that uh, an, an extremely large panel that sees contextual behavior 
or actions on the internet, if you like. It's all captured inside of that, that uh, shopper graph. And I come from the world of Nielsen, which is all about panels and the strength of panels to create context and therefore create audience segments. And that's something that, uh, that, that Critio will take advantage of from the retargeting world to expanding into the uh, audience-based buying world. The work that we're doing with Google is also um, powerful, and that is uh, working with them to take their uh, early um, adaptation of, uh, of Turtle Dove, which was their way to move uh, third party cookies off of the browser and eradicate third party cookies. We put proposals in front of them, which they have, um, have been uh, extremely positive about. We call that Sparrow, which we've uh, talked a, a lot about uh, to the industry. And they're taking those proposals into their new uh, iteration, which they call Dovetail. So lots of uh, activity going on there around cohorts or building cohorts of audiences. And then the last one, to your point, is around the collaboration with the Trade Desk. Now, if you think that between the Trade Desk and Critio, we have the largest reach uh, on the planet in terms of getting in front of uh, both uh, brands and, and uh, media owners. Ours is massive. I mean, our reach out there is 5,000 plus media owners and uh, 20,000 plus brands. And for us to, uh, to work with the Trade Desk on the UID to bring to that system, not just the reach, but also the single sign-on capabilities, transparency portal, so some technology, and then work together as an industry with LiveRamp, with Nielsen, to try to get ad, uh, adoption of the UID is uh, the work that's in front of us through 2021. And it is, uh, it's going to be uh, exciting and extremely important work. Megan, as we're recording this at the beginning of 2021, uh, with an eventful year in the world and in our industry, um, and given the fact that uh, you have bring uh, to Critio almost 15 years of experience, as you mentioned, from Nielsen. What are some of the priorities um, for Critio going forward? And, and do you see a role around the intersection between identity and attribution and measurement, which are so important uh, for marketers to be focused on these days? Yeah, look, our priority is to serve uh, our clients uh, and to really open up and utilize the space outside of the walled gardens, the open internet, which uh, makes up 38% uh, of the world's uh, e-commerce um, marketplace at the moment. And to do that through the assets that I talked about before, you know, our clients are looking for reach, uh, they're looking for um, ROI, and they're looking for loyalty. And it's our job to deliver that to them, which lends itself to the measurement uh, uh, question. Measurement's incredibly important in terms of uh, showing them that we've reached the right consumer at the right time, the right device, that has given them a return on that investment, that we identify everything through uh, that transaction uh, and what uh, it's costing them. And that ultimately those uh, consumers return, which goes right back to the beginning of our business, which has been core retargeting. So covering that entire uh, gamut of services uh, for our clients is what's priority for us uh, through 2021.